What is going on today, everybody? It's Buddy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I took this crashed and super filthy, neglected Nissan Altima and turned it into thousands of dollars of profit. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Buddy, and I buy and sell cars full time and make videos on the entire process that I personally use to make sure it is profitable. So if you wanna learn how to get potentially profitable vehicles at low prices, how to fix them up and flip them and make a whole lot of money on the back end, be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss anything. I'm about to take you guys through the entire story of this Nissan Altima from how much I knew I should buy it for, how much I knew I should sell it for, how much money I had to put into it, and ultimately how much profit I made. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So I was doing my normal nightly thing, scrolling through autotempest.com looking for deals when I came across this black 2017 Altima that was priced fairly cheap for the year. It was a 2017 with 99,000 miles and for only $9,000. It looked to be in actually great shape here from these pictures. So I clicked on the pictures to check it out and get a closer look. So upon looking at the pictures, the inside looked pretty decent. It was stained and it looked to have a bunch of trash in it, but from what I can see, it didn't look ripped up or didn't have any trim pieces missing on the dash. And taking a look at the other pictures of the exterior, it looked to be in fairly good condition. I mean, it's only a 2017, so I don't really expect anything seriously wrong with it. Now, it wasn't until I got to the last picture Picture until I realized why the price of this thing was fairly cheap. I saw it was missing a headlight and it was dented pretty bad in from the front. It looked to be in a little fender bender. The damage didn't seem bad enough to cause any frame damage so I really wasn't too worried about this being a serious issue. So now going here into the description it read, selling my car, missing a headlight, need to order one. Car is running a little rough, don't have time to mess with it, $9,000. So a few things here in the description. The car running a little rough can mean so many different things. Engine issues, maybe suspension noise, transmission issues, and pretty much anything in between. So it doesn't really tell me much. All that tells me is that the seller doesn't know much about cars or they would be a lot more specific. Also, not having time to mess with it, it can mean a few things. They're either over the car completely because the issues keep popping up or they're playing dumb or they just don't care about the car and probably have another car. So it could be one of those three things. So I wanted to get a good idea what these things sell for in good condition. Now I enter all the info here in Kelly Blue Book and it came out to just over $10,000. Now going back to autotempest.com to do some comparisons, I'm seeing potentially eleven dollars to $12,000 for these kind of miles on this car is what dealers are selling for, of course. So I knew there was a little bit of profit to be made, especially if I can get it slightly cheaper than even the asking price. So the next thing to do was to message a seller and see if I can take a look at this thing in person. I asked if they still had it and if he has any wiggle room here on the price. He gave that classic response you always hear from the older generation, money talks. So I knew this guy right off the bat was going to be negotiable. As I explained in my other car flip videos, is never to spit out a price like, will you take $5,000? In my experience, people who do that aren't even serious buyers in the first place. Even when you do accept their lowball offer, they're still not even serious buyers. Now I do remember they said in the description the car ran rough and that's a really bad way of describing an issue, but I assume they aren't mechanically inclined so I didn't bother asking them any specific questions. I just asked if the car could be driven and they said yes. So that's good enough for me. So we scheduled a time to see the car in person. Luckily for me, it was only 10 minutes away. So it's time to grab some cash and set off to see this car in person. Now, while we're driving there, a few things I wanna to touch on. The first thing is what to bring with you. As always in every video, I recommend bringing an OBD reader with you. I left the link in the description for three OBD readers that I do recommend and I personally use. Next is gonna be the price of the cars that you should look for. Now, obviously some of you will have bigger budgets than other when you're looking for cars to flip, but cars under $7,000 sell very fast in my area. But this one being over $10,000 fixed up, it may be challenging to sell, so that's just something to keep in mind Obviously, each area is gonna be a little different. Now, the last thing is the site I was referring to earlier that actually helped me find this little Altima called autotempest.com. And since I already use them to look for car flips, they agreed to sponsor today's video. And if you guys saw my previous car flipping video, you'll know that I found this gorgeous BMW M3 from their site. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick how I personally use this website to find cars to flip. So in the tabs here, you can search used cars or you can search new cars. So we'll click BMW on the make and for the model, we'll click M3, enter in my zip code, and we'll set it to 1500 miles for now and I'll go to advanced search since I want to search the E36 generation. So check this out. It's going to show us listings for all M3s in this generation from all the major sites like cars.com, eBay, TrueCar, and more. Now the really cool thing I like best about this site is you can search national results from Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. So for example, let's click on Marketplace and I'll show you what I mean. So here you can search the Southeast region, the South, the Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, Texas area, and the Rocky Mountains all separately. Or you can even do a national search and hit this button here. So now you'll see that it opened up all the tabs 
products and you literally get every single BMW M3 from this generation on all of Facebook Marketplace with one click. This is super convenient if you're looking for the best possible deals, especially if you're looking for a somewhat uncommon car. This exact method is the method that I actually use to find this Nissan hard body as well. I don't usually use the Facebook app, but I just search everything through Auto Tempest because it's a little more streamlined. Now you can do the same thing here with Craigslist. Just hit the Craigslist button and you can either search a region or you can click the button at the top for national search again. Since I found this website, it's been a complete game changer for me on finding deals. So huge shout out to autotempest.com for helping make videos like this possible. And be sure to check them out in the description below using the link. So after about 10 minutes of driving, we finally arrived here at the seller's house. First thing I noticed, it was obviously missing that headlight and the dented bumper, of course. Now, the only thing I wanted to make sure is that there was no frame damage and it all seemed to be purely cosmetic issues, so that was good. The seller told me no airbags were deployed and that's good news as well. Also looking at the exterior of the paint, it seemed to be a bit faded. You can see a little bit of hazing and that's definitely not it just being dirty, but the clear coat looks to be in decent shape. It's not peeling off, so a buff can get this thing looking absolutely beautiful again. Now, there was also a little bit of paint chips and the one thing about black cars is paint chips show up very noticeably, but there's nothing that I couldn't touch up. Now the last thing I noticed on the exterior was the side mirror cap was missing. It seemed that all the clips were attached to it so I could just put a new cap on it and it should be fine. Now moving on to the interior, I was happy to find no broken trim pieces or rips or tears in the seats. The interior was absolutely filthy though with a super thick layer of gunk on the steering wheel. Now other than it just being super dirty, I couldn't find anything wrong with the inside. The back seats were a little stained, but with a little bit of elbow grease and the right chemicals, I think I can make this interior look really good. So now let's check the most important important part of the car and that was the mechanical issues. As soon as I started the car, the check engine light popped right on and I felt the idle and instantly knew what it was. It was a misfire. And just to confirm my assumption, I hooked up my scanner and sure enough, we got a P0300 code, multiple misfires. Now we'll get into how to diagnose and fix all that later. Also, when the car was in idle, I could hear some sort of rattling. Without really taking a good minute to look at the car under the hood, I couldn't pinpoint it, but I sure it was not something catastrophic because it was a very slight rattle, nothing seemed to be knocking. And the last two things I noticed was the front driver blinker was out. The driver side blinker was blinking fast, and that's the side that did not have the missing headlight. And on top of that, the key battery was low. So all little stuff, nothing too crazy. Now other than that, there wasn't any issues that stuck out to me, so I decided this car wouldn't be too bad and it wouldn't cause too much of a headache, and it would be a fun little profitable flip. But I had to chew down the seller on the price a little bit to make sure that I had enough room to make a profit. So the listing price was $9,000, and that was not going to cut it since these cars sell for eleven dollars to $12,000 in good shape. I'm definitely not investing $9,000 to fix something up and potentially only make a $1,000 profit. So I knew the seller wanted it gone because he said in the ad earlier, don't have time to mess with it. So I knew he wasn't invested in this car and he was going to let it go. So I pretty much told him something like this. So when I got here, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it just needed some cosmetic work in the front and some cleaning and something simple in the engine, but it needs a really deep detail to get all the stains out, some diagnostic work to fix out the rattling, a little bit of engine work for the misfire, some cosmetic work on the exterior. In order for me to make it make sense to me, I can give you $7,000. Now that is a little bit of a low ball, but I knew he'd come back at me with a stronger offer. He said, let's meet in the middle at 8,000 cash and let's do it. Honestly, I was willing to pay upwards of $8,500, but hitting him with a decent low ball offer made him go under what I was willing to pay. So I shook his hand at $8,000. We officially got all the paperwork for the car. So now it's time to take the car back home. Now on the way home, I wanna talk about low balls in person versus over text. So I did low ball him in person from 9,000 to 7,000 dollars and it worked in my favor but like how i mentioned earlier if i were to try that over text it would absolutely not have gone as well when you pull out cash and show the money in your hand that is way stronger than a lowball offer over text me personally when i sell cars i cannot stand people who shoot me random numbers without even seeing the car pretty much 10 out of 10 times they're not even serious even if they offer you two thousand dollars and you say yes they still won't even show up now i want to talk to you about driving on a misfire you should really never drive a car when a car is misfiring, especially if it's missing more than one cylinder. But even though the code on the car threw a misfire code for multiple misfires, I knew it was only missing one cylinder. It's a four cylinder engine, so if it was missing two or more, the car wouldn't even start. But being it's only 10 minutes away, and I knew it wouldn't be too big of a deal, and I didn't feel like spending hundreds of dollars here on a tow truck, I just slowly made my way back home. So now that we're back at the house, it's time to start fixing this thing up and getting this thing in cell ready condition. So I made a checklist of 
of all the issues that need to be fixed and let's start here with the mechanical issues. Now the first thing on the list was that misfire. So with a P0300 code, it's not telling me which cylinder is missing. So the best thing to do in this situation is to pop the hood and check all the coils and make sure they're all nice and snug and just make sure all the spark plugs under the coils are nice and snug as well. Now when I pulled out the second coil here, I could see the cylinder was flooded with oil so I knew instantly without even checking anything, this thing was not firing at all. I cleaned it out real nice with a screwdriver and I got a new coil here from the parts shop up the road and boom we got a super nice idle with no more engine code. So let's go ahead and cross the misfire off the list and move on to that strange engine noise. But first, let's start our money invested chart so we can keep track of how much money we're spending on this project car. We have $8,000 so far for the car and we only have $25 here for the ignition coil at the parts store. So let's move on here to that engine noise. So at the seller's house, I did take a peek under the hood, but I didn't examine the engine bay super well. But if I did, I would have found this issue earlier. Right here on the top of the engine, there was a completely blown out motor mount. You can't really tell from this angle, but watch when we pull it out. So to pull it out, there's only three bolts holding it in place. So with the right tools, I was able to slowly make some room and pull this thing right out. Now that I got it out, you can see the difference here between the new one and the old one. This thing is completely shot out. There's no wonder there was a vibration noise in the cabin. So with the new motor mount back in place, I got the three bolts back in and we got rid of that rattling noise. So let's go ahead and cross off the noise off the list and we're officially done with the mechanical issues. So let's take care of that dying key battery. Now, remember while I was inspecting the car, that little notification on the dash I mentioned earlier about the key battery being low. So I ran up to the battery shop and for only $14 they sold me a battery and they even popped it in for me so I didn't even have to mess with it. That's why I really love these little battery shops. So let's cross off the key battery off the list and at this point this thing is running absolutely perfect. Now going back here to the money investor chart, we're going to add another $28 here for the motor mount and $14 here for that key battery. So now, the first step here is to really give this car a full detail and we got to pull the seats for that. There's four bolts in each corner of each seat that holds the seats in place and if they're power seats obviously you have to remove all the electrical connections under the seat and at that point they'll pull right out now after everything is stripped it's time to get all the trash out of this car and give this thing a super thorough vacuum and after that it's time to soak the floorboard and some concentrated cleaner and we're especially going to soak these really nasty caked on spots and for you guys who've seen my other car flipping videos you guys know that i love using lithium auto care products anytime i detail a car i use the hyper cleanse from lithium and this stuff works so good it'll get literally any stain at any service this stuff is like magic they have a big selection of other stuff like trim restoration and interior cleaning and pretty much anything you can think of and they agreed to give all my subscribers a huge discount of 20 percent anything store-wide and that's buddy's diy 20 and all that information will be in the description below and after letting the cleaner set in for a few minutes i worked it in with a drill brush to make sure i got all that nasty gunk loose so i can suck it up with my carpet cleaner now i just use a standard carpet cleaner to suck it up now if you look here you can really see all that nasty grime and dirt getting sucked out this thing was gross so now it's time to do the same thing here with the seats i spray them down in my concentrated cleaner i let it soak for a few minutes and then i work the cleaner in with the drill brush to knock everything loose and finally use my carpet cleaner to suck out all that nasty filth of all those years of dirt being caked on here and you can really see these seats were holding a bunch of nastiness deep down in the fabric and here's a before and after to show you guys the huge difference it made here once i was done these seats were gross and now it's time to work on the back seats you can see these back seats were super stained and nasty here's a beautiful before and after of those back seats as well these were really gross so i slapped the seats back in i threw some brand new ultima labeled mats in as well just to doll up the interior and now a quick wipe down of everything including that nasty steering wheel that was completely caked on with gunk and you can really see the difference of the before and after in this interior it is looking absolutely amazing i'm so happy with this interior and how it turned out and all those stains came out it's definitely going to make this thing so much easier to sell so let's cross off the interior detailing off the list and move on to the exterior of the car so now we're going to go back to the money invested chart and we're going to add those floor mats which were a little bit pricey but well worth it at 63 dollars so now back to removing a dent like this out of the plastic bumper what you're going to need to do is you're going to heat up the bumper with either a hair dryer or even better an actual heat gun like i have now be careful not to burn the paint and keep moving the gun you definitely don't want to hold the gun right there on the paint because you're going to start bubbling up and cracking your paint and once the plastic is nice and toasty you can press the dent out just like that work all the small little dents here with your fist and slowly just reform the bumper as best as you can and you'll see this bumper is back into perfect shape 
Can't even really tell it was ever dented in the first place. So let's cross off the bumper off our to-do list and move on to getting the headlight housing replaced. Now, a headlight housing on this car is actually fairly cheap. It was even cheaper than I thought. For only $100, I grabbed a factory one that was slightly used but in good shape with fast shipping on eBay. Now, to install it, I had to drop the bumper, which was a little bit of a pain. The reason I had to drop the bumper is I had to get all the screws out and the screws were behind the bumper. So, Pulling the bumper was fairly easy. A couple of trim tabs under the hood that I had to pop out, and there was a screw here on the wheel well that was holding in the side of the bumper. And when the bumper was out of my way, I was able to slide in the new headlight housing, secure it in place because I got access to all the screws, and boom, you can really see a huge difference of the before and after. This car is cleaning up so nicely with that dent gone and the new headlight. And while the bumper was still hanging off, I actually swapped out that bad blinker on the driver's side as well. Believe it or not, I looked it up, and you actually have to pull the bumper down and you got to pull the whole headlight housing just to replace the driver's side blinker. Absolutely absurd. I don't know what the engineers were thinking, but nonetheless, we got it done. So now we can cross off the headlight housing replacement and the blinker off the list and move on to the final touches here. So like we talked about earlier, the side mirror cap was missing, but it looked like all the clips were in place. So luckily I found the standard black side mirror cap on eBay for only $25. So I slapped it in there and it was a perfect match to the paint. Super happy I didn't have to paint it. So let's cross off the side mirror cap off the list and move on to that touch up paint for all those paint chips. Now, getting a touch up paint is as easy as going to your local dealership and asking for it. It usually comes with a brush that resembles a nail polish brush, but something much easier to use are these little touch-up brushes specifically for car paint touch-ups. So I went around and I touched up all the little paint chips and scratches and I made this thing look like there was no damage at all. So let's jump back to the money invested chart real quick. We got $100 for the headlight housing, $25 for the side mirror cap, and it was $15 for that little bottle of touch-up paint. Now let's cross off the touch-up paint off the list and move on to the last thing. So the first thing I did was take the car up to the car wash and get all this nasty and heavy dirt and dust off the car since this thing was absolutely filthy. Show the muscles. <laughs> like this one? Buddy is buff over here. Hmm? Are you recording me? Yeah, so, so now that it's dry, it's time to give this thing a buff and bring out that beautiful black paint. And speaking of beautiful, my childhood friend Jade is in town for the week and asked if I needed any help. So I told her that she can buff the entire car here for me. And honestly, I'm sure she looks a lot better on camera than me buffing this car. Now, after Jade was finished up, you can see that the paint on this car is absolutely glowing. I gotta say, buffing a black car with some haze and bringing out that deep black is one of the most satisfying things that you could do. The exterior is absolutely banging. You can really see here the difference between the before and after. So that is the absolute last thing here to do on the to-do list. We can go ahead and cross off the last thing. It runs perfect. The interior is super clean. It looks like a brand new car on the outside. It's shining bright. Now it's time to take some pictures and we can get this thing posted and get it out of my driveway. So I got some really nice pictures of the inside and out to show how beautiful this car is. And I decided to list it on the upper end of what they usually sell for, for $12,500, just because this thing was in such good condition now. Now it did sit a little bit longer than I like. Finally, at three weeks of sitting, I got someone who seemed like an actual potential series buyer. Like I said, the more expensive a car, especially over six to $7,000, it'll sit for much longer. So the person who was really interested came by and I decided to let it go for only $10,750 which is what under everyone was selling but it was an excellent deal for the new owner and I was still able to pocket some cash and I didn't have to do a crazy amount of labor on this car so now we're gonna do some math together to see what the numbers come out to so let's go back to the money invested chart let's add everything up to get a total amount invested in this project and with everything here added up it comes out to eight thousand two hundred seventy two dollars so let's just add another hundred dollars for miscellaneous things like detailing products gas and other things that I might be forgetting now that brings us to a total amount invested of eight thousand $1,372. And with a sale price of $10,750, that's going to be a total profit margin of $2,518. Not the craziest profit margin ever, especially for a more expensive car, but I really didn't have to do any major mechanical work and it was just pretty much cleaning this thing up cosmetically. So now let's do some more math here and see what an hourly rate would have been since you guys always ask for that breakdown. 
So I'm gonna go over a little bit of my labor. So it took about an hour to diagnose and swap out that bad coil that caused the engine misfire, about an hour and a half to diagnose the vibration noise and swap out that motor mount, since it was only a few bolts, really. The key battery took me 30 minutes to drive to and from the battery store. Now the interior detail did took a good while at about five hours of scrubbing and vacuuming, all that good stuff. The bumper only took about 30 minutes of heating and reforming. The headlight took about an hour since I had to remove some bolts, drop the bumper, and get it out of the way and put the new one in. Side mirror only took about one minute, so we're not even going to count that. I spent about an hour of going around with touch-up paint and fixing all the little chips and making it look nice. And it took Jade about an hour or so to buff the car. Even though that it wasn't technically me buffing the car, I still think it's fair that I count an hour and the time invested to complete the project if I didn't have Jade around to help me. So we'll go ahead and tack an hour on for that as well. Now let's add another three hours of driving, buying cars, taking pictures of it, posting it. And that comes out to a total of 14.5 hours of labor invested in this thing. So let's take the profit margin of 2,518. We'll divide it by 14.5 hours of labor. And that comes out to $173 per hour. That is one of the best dollars per hour in this entire series that I actually did. So I'll call that a success. Now you guys know I do all the repairs, filming and editing and all that stuff stuff by myself. These videos take a crazy amount of work. That's why I only make a couple a year, but be sure to support me by subscribing. There's going to be a lot more car flipping videos for you guys to come over the years. Hit the bell icon so you guys know when the next car flipping video is going to drop and hit that like button so YouTube knows that I make good videos. And a huge shout out to autotempest.com for making videos like this possible. Not only are they my official sponsor of my videos, but also making my life a whole lot easier car shop. And I'll leave a link in the description for autotempest.com so maybe you guys can find your next car flip on their site. That's all I have here for you guys today, and I'll see you guys on the next flip video.